Okay, so I've been waiting for certain things to dry. Hello, Spiff. Uh, I've been working on things for the Ruin Puzzle project. So I have this stepper motor right here. Uh, it has one of those special pumps. These type of pumps they use for uh, in, I forgot what it's called off the top of my head, but it spins and it uses tension on the actual tube to make a vacuum to suck and pull. It, these, I think they use it for blood. Uh, to like not not to keep your heart pumping, but it helps them pump a lot or something like that. Anyway, for this I have the jar of milk, but that's just water. And what I have over here, I was gonna just do this on the video, so I'm gonna put some water and dye in here, so everyone can see that it does kind of work. Give a little swish. Give a nice little swish. Oh, look at that! Look at that blue water. It's like a horseshoe crab blood. Now, if I come over here to Arduino and I go to... It's doing that because uh, every time this... Every time the Arduino here turn... Or, uh, there's a there's code here that enables and disables the uh, st uh, stepper driver. Because there's 23 volts running through it. This needs 23 volts. Uh, just to pump all this water. And I haven't done any testing at speed, which... I'm about to, but just let you know. So it will run, and the second it's done running, it turns that off so that this doesn't overheat. So I can touch this heating element without it burning. Because if not, it's just constantly having power draw through it, and it just, eh, you know, eh. It's, I've already killed all those over there because of that code. Honestly, I couldn't tell if any of these are old or not. Anyway, back to what I was doing. So it shows, it tells communication initialized. Focus! The motor is disabled. How many steps? So, positive steps is um, clockwise, negative is counter. So, I want it to pump clockwise, so that's a positive number. And I think 35,000 might be enough. It doesn't really matter, because it's going to go through that other tube, so I don't have to worry about that. And, bam! But now, ask me for my steps. I think 1,200 was a good number. So, 1,200. And there it goes! Oh, look at it go! <laughs> oh, and it comes up. Blue water! And also, it kind of runs out of water, so there's that too. So yeah, um, I have no idea how I'm going to do this for the actual... Um, I hope this doesn't stain the tubing, by the way. No, I don't think it will. Um, <laughs> but, uh... Also, I can just do the same thing in reverse, so negative. Let's do over 65, or er, 35. Let's, let's do negative, uh, I don't know, 45,000. Let's set the speed to a lot higher, like 1,500. <laughs> and there it goes. And the water is going to go through. It shakes a, whoa, look at that water fill. <laughs> There's a lot of wattage in going through here. So if I want to stop it, I can just do, press... Chop. Stop complaining. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Probably some weird code thing of a bob. Anyway, there's that. And this thing is just slightly warm. Isn't that great? It works! Uh, what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to plan on looking into... Uh, I think I, I have more of these. I just got to find them. And I'm just going to use these. Hopefully that should make it more silent. Uh, also, since this thing has such a bigger, much bigger radiator than this thing, it shouldn't overheat as much. The only issue is I was, I didn't understand a lot of things because, so, there's step direction. Also, trying to figure out what the coils are. For some reason, uh, a lot of this stepper motor stuff is not standardized like servos are. For example, in this example, so, uh, red and blue is on one coil, black and green is on another. And this other one right here, that's the opposite. It would be red and green and then blue and black so it's not that was you know if it's not serenized that was throwing me off i don't know if that's just because this is a bigger step motor than this one but anyway uh another thing is i tried using one of these uh cheap you know one of these little shields here that did not work it works on those drivers but these drivers have different positions so because it has any it there's there's uh no there's two coils in here, or two sets of coils, or whatever. There's four connections, you know, one, two, one, two. And the position for that is different, it works for this motor, but not this one. 
unless I swap things around. And I think some other pin layout for enabling the uh, driver and also telling the Arduino what the step and direction is. But I got it to work. It just didn't work that well. So, uh, yeah. Uh, tomorrow, probably, you know, my birthday tomorrow, which is going to be painful and lonely. I might stream doing stuff for the Fast Forge, just building their little toys. Uh, and also, I'll probably start designing this thing right here. Because this, this will not take me long. I already have all the like, components. The only thing that might take me time is maybe ordering the drivers. <laughs> if I can't find any more that aren't broken. Or these might not even be broken. I'm not sure. It's mainly just the potentiometer. Because if I, if I do this one right here, if I do this one... At some point, the potentiometer stops, but on this one, the potentiometer just keeps spinning. And oh, or maybe I just maybe I just broke this one. Maybe I broke it. Did I break this one? Ooh, did I break this one? Yeah. No, no. Wait. I think. No, I didn't break it. Yay! That one might. This one might still be alive. I'll throw you over there. I may throw you in the blue water because it's your color. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, I still have to do for um, the clowns. I have to repaint uh, Lemonade Clown because his thing fell in purple paint. He was like perfectly landed in there. And also I had to reprint the hats because these hats had no space for their big thick hair. Oh! But I redesigned it to have a little concave area. But And then I realized I need to figure out how to put the flower in there. Luckily, I don't need to worry about that. If I come into the still open ceiling plan design and I lift up this container here, whoop, I get, I'll just sit right there. No, just, there we go. So, ta da! A beautiful little flower. Look how pretty she is. And if I, very careful, I don't break anything, I have the hat. The hat with a hole in the top. So, if I just do something real quick. Behold, the, the little flowers are now attached to a hat with a hole in the top. There's a little shaft in the hole. Yes, look, it is hot. It fits perfectly. Ha! Oh! <laughs> I have to drill it out a little bit because inconsistency with 3D printing. I also had to reprint this idiot because uh, I dropped the other one and my big fat foot did a and crushed it. My foot's still bleeding, but I won't go into that. Hmm. You will like and subscribe, you will like and subscribe, you will like and subscribe, you will like and subscribe. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave them in here so that they can dry. And then I can start, you know, put them on the, the spinny spin and get them nice and dry. In here I have come up with a better, you know, with a better way of controlling the uh, cleanup process. So in here, I have it all organized. I have these rubber mats to make sure there's not as little spill as possible. I need to get mats for these things. I need to clean that up. I'll do it later. Fixed. <laughs> this, you know, this is an old one I had, but because there's no back like that one has, it's kind of just there. I'll put you somewhere else. So, but in general, the process is, is that I will... Oh, that's sticky. That's sticky. So I'll clean... So I'll use the vat, and I'll resin it so that it dries the bottom... Once, once I get the bottom out, make sure there's nothing still attached to the film. I come over here. Ew, don't touch that. And I use this big turkey baster syringe to just... It all up, and I use this metal funnel to just... Into it. Into this container right here. <laughs> also, I'm saving these big um, flat pieces, because I put these in the actual vat first. And then when I cure the vat, I can just pull this up and it peels right out a lot easier. And, you know, I just have that. It's a lot... It, doing it this way is a lot easier because I do this... Pro, I don't have to suck up and suck it all out and put it back... Like, to strain it and then put it back in. But I'm too paranoid because I do not want to have to randomly replace this stuff when it fake Because I forgot a little tiny piece of plastic or whatever is in there and it just tears open the... Uh, you know, the film. This one is still not being used because I haven't really gotten a replacement piece for because there's something warped and broke, but it should be here in like two months. But uh, yeah, it's a lot cleaner over here. Uh, good old Big Bertha is still out of commission. 
Hello, Mango. Oh my god, Five Nights at Freddy's 2 spoilers. But anyway. <laughs> so here's Big Bertha. I haven't, I haven't fixed her because, well, I don't need a 3D printer right now. I haven't been, like, these printers are only really useful because, you know, they're old. I can put something really small that doesn't need that much detail done. Because their printing, like, quality is low. And I haven't really had the time to work on them and fine-tune them ever, so I never did. So, hopefully, when, uh, you know, when I get around to it, when I start making the robots again, like for Fun Time Freddy, I can, uh, oh god, <laughs> I can, uh, <laughs> I can start, I can repair her and get these babies spamming. These two are still up here. The Mimi! <laughs> uh... Uh, what a nice smile! <sighs> oh, you, you look very handsome today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, look at her. Give me a kiss. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I have to go sideways. Oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, I still have that giant light bulb. <laughs> Just waiting to use it. It's like, ha ha! I have an idea. Pfft. Oh, it broke. <laughs> Anyway, just uh, going over things. That. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Blue water. Oh, ho, ho, ho.